Hello and welcome to Pilsen region in the Czech Republic. Kremlin, to be precise, the nearest town is Nepobuk. We're here for the 2022 Cycle Cross and Quad Cross of Nations annual competition. This is a spectacular part of the Czech Republic. Beautiful scenery, beautiful architecture, and in summer, it is the place to be. Just absolutely lovely people. Outside, though, you wouldn't imagine that a motocross track could have a city this pretty, that close. Pilsen, of course, famous for its brewery, and uh, hence the, the origin of Pilsner, the beer, is just incredible. Czech beer, the finest yeast in the world, guaranteeing some of the finest beer in the world. And if you ever get the chance, then go to Pilsen and sample the goods. The Nepa Book Club, in business since 1947, organizers here at the Kremlin Track, and it's a, a world famous track, the Kremlin Track. Just look how spectacular the scenery is, rolling countryside. Winners of the quad competition last year, Team Ireland, Mark McLernan, the captain. Mark McLernan, you come here to the Czech Republic as winners, holders of the trophy, victory in the last one. It's going to be a bit different for Ireland this time around, yeah? Yeah, definitely, you know, like, especially this year, the Americans are here and um, teammates Dean Dillon and David Cowan. So we just have to try our best and see how we get on. Were you pleased with it? Obviously pleased, but were you surprised with the result last time out? Um, probably, sort of, we going to the event, we sort of knew that we were in for a chance because especially without the Americans being there, like, with sort of, like, I think I have maybe th two third place finishes and a second place finish. So, you know, it was... Sort of, we, we sort of we were happy with the result, but you know, we sort of knew we were in for a fight for the, the win. Runners up were Italy, of course, and they're here in strength again. Runners up in 2019. Are you hoping to go one better this year? Yeah, we are a good position in 19. I hope this year, uh, same similar position. We'll see, we have a good team. Me, Simone Mastronardi and Nicolò Roagna, it's a three faster guys. And uh, we'll see, I ride in this track in 2019 for European Championship and I like this track and I use my experience for better for every team. The USA team took a clean sweep in 2019, but after two years of being away with COVID, they're back for more. The captain, Chad Wiener. Chad Wienan, captain of the US team, you've just finished a track walk. First impressions of Kremlin? Uh, it's going to be a very fast track. Uh, like what you said, it's the fat, one of the fastest tracks here in Europe, and uh, it's, I think it's going to live up to that expectation. A lot of elevation change. That hole shot's going to be so key for how it uh, barrels into that first turn. It's going to be fast. So uh, we're looking forward to it. We have a really good impression of the track, and the team is uh, feeling confident. How does it compare to what you're used to in the US? Do you have anything similar? Uh, Unadilla is very similar, maybe not as much elevation, but they, they call that the, the house of horsepower, house of horsepower there. So it's a, it's a very fast track. I'm sure we'll be hitting fifth gear a couple times on this track as well. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be fun. I'm enjoy I'm going to enjoy it. Do you see any threat coming from behind? Who do you see as the team most likely to challenge? I mean, you got to respect everybody. Uh, we haven't been, we haven't raced here for a couple of years in uh, Ireland. You know, they had a, a successful year last year, and that they're the champions last year. So, um, obviously, keeping an eye on eye on them. And then, uh, you know, France is usually uh, sneaky fast as well. And um, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to be a, a full on. All these nations are here to try and win, and uh, that's our that's our goal to try and come out and win as well. And it's going to be a battle. Certainly is. This is how they line up. Race one then for groups A and B. Bryce Ford, Chad Wien and two of the US. Randy Novo, new name to me. Vlemans from the Belgium as well. Mastronardi, Rowania, McLernan and Dylan from Ireland, the defending champions. Walker, Jamie Morgan for Great Britain. I can't say UK. Granley and Holman from Norway. The Dutch, Masson and Haverdill. Wonder what Haverdill can do here. Petit Boissy, Kevin Saar, of course reigning European champion. Well, Jay Parts, a uh, 
an Austrian-based company specializing in quad spares, very much one of our sponsors for this event. And we get race one underway on this spectacular Kremlin track. Just look at it. Watch the gate then. 25 minutes plus two laps for these guys. The gate's down and away they go. Two rows, in fact, two and a half rows up towards the first right-hander. It looked to me like a Dutchman hit the front. It looked to me like the orange and blue of the Netherlands in front, getting the whole shot ahead of the USA. Let's have a look. It is. It's, it's Joe Masson. Joe Masson from the Netherlands. He's got the whole shot, but it's a USA rider. Is that Chad Wienan? Chad Wienan in second. And Kevin Saar. Kevin Saar up there as well in the blue. The Estonian five times European EMX champion. Kevin Saar, you'd expect him to go well. And he's already on the inside of Chad Wienan. But it's the Dutchman leading. What a cracking start Joe Masson got here. Kevin Saar around the outside, into the deep stuff, cutting back. But Chad Wienan through. Chad Wienan, the long, lanky, six foot three, big man. Eight times AMA champion. Uh, Adam Tuchek, local rider out of it, the number 29, got it screwed up sideways, so he's got a bit of work to do. There, Mark McLernan, sorry, I'm choking here. Mark McLernan, number one team captain for the defending champions. Ireland know they've got their work cut out with the USA back in town, but I can tell you, as McLernan going through on the inside now of Joe Masson, who appears to be going backwards after a brilliant hole shot. Number 10, Joe Masson. Fantastic, fantastic ride from him. Look over the shoulder from the Belgian, Randy Naveau. Randy Naveau. From Belgium, not a regular running. He's gone inside Kevin Saar. So Kevin Saar has been relegated by the Belgian. And this is unusual territory for me. I don't see Kevin Saar getting passed usually over the season by anyone other than Chris Tverinen. But this Belgian is quick and mightily quick on his Yamaha. The majority of the bikes the 450cc Yamaha, look at Kevin Saar around the outside, high on the burn, but dropping back in to cut back in, and now having another look at the Belgian. Good fight between these two. Randy Naveau then, from the French side of Belgium, French speaking. In one of his qualifying interviews, he actually answered our lady presenter in French, and with my primitive knowledge of French, I had to somehow decipher the interview, which hopefully I did. Kevin Saar then, Kevin Saar coming through, and Naveau not having any of it, neck and neck these two, what a fantastic scrap. Christopher up there by the look of it, oh who's that out of it? Who is that? Kevin Saar out of it. Well, that's an absolute catastrophe for Kevin Saar and Team Estonia. At the front, Chad Wienan, the number 47, captain of the USA team, marching imperiously on here, on this Kremlin track, which has had a fair amount of rain leading up to the event. And I can tell you, we got a big crowd in here as well. There were a lot in for qualification, but there are even more in today for race day. Big, big crowd. Bryce Ford making his way through. The young second new kid on the block. If you ask Chad Whedon, Chad Whedon out of it. So the number one USA rider is out of it. So now all of the responsibility rests on the young shoulders of Bryce Ford. The number 46 American rider, and there he is in the red shirt. And he's on the back now of Randy Naveau. Randy Naveau, the Belgian. Well, I have to tell you, I, I, I'm speechless. Why have we not seen Randy Naveau regularly in the European EMX Championship? But doing a great job. And now Bryce Ford passed. And into the lead, Bryce Ford. 
Or does he have someone ahead of him? Did I see a red shirt going round the corner there? But it's Bryce Ford. Oh, that, that's Harry Walker. Harry Walker, number 13, from the UK. So he's running in a very strong place as well. Harry Walker in good shape here. Moved in recent years from Honda Power to Yamaha. And he was going absolutely flying in qualifying. And he's going equally well in the race. The captions going across. French rider Sylvain Petit as well. Running strongly. Haverdill down in 11. Voici Morgan. That's the teammate to Harry Walker. Bryce Ford from the USA, this young man having his debut in international competition. Very enthusiastic, check and flag to him. He gets it from Randy DeVoe. Well, that was a brilliant, brilliant ride by the young American. And it's Harry Walker. Harry Walker's coming home in third place ahead of Sylvain Petit of France. Harry Walker up and over for the last time. He'll get third place, check and flag out for him. What a great performance by the young Brit. Frenchman in fourth. Joe Masson, good starter for the Netherlands in fifth. Dean Dillon for Ireland in sixth place. Ahead of his teammate, Mark McClellan. Oh, I'm not I'm not honestly sure. Um, I was just riding my race. I was pretty far back at the start of the race, um, which we didn't plan on. Um, I wanted to get a good start, but uh, it was it was super fun. Um, I'm not sure what happened to Chad Wien, and I just got informed of this, but uh, that's unfortunate. And um, I'm sure it's something something to do with the deep ruts in, in a rock or something, but um, I'm not sure, so I don't want to speak on that. But just just super pumped, super pumped. I, I I've been um, thinking about a moment like this for a long time, and, and just to get it done in in front of the world, it's it's super cool. So I'm just excited to be here and just soaking all this in super cool indeed it is brilliant Bryce Ford then race two then on this spectacular track two Americans in this one we've got Joel Hedrick and Chad Wienan again oh that's Pat Patrick Torini stalled on the line, did a bit of a wheelie, stalled it, so the Italian runners up last year, they're going to have to work now, so he's coming from the back, stalled it on the line. Who got that? Oh, Joel Hedrick, Joel Hedrick, round he comes, he got the whole shot, Chad Wienan in there with a blue shirt this time, the number 47, a bit of a change of livery for him, hoping that will change his luck, but the commemorative crash helmets that these Americans were given prior to the event. Spectacularly marked, of course, with the national flag, the stars and stripes. Very, very colorful. But it's a great start by Duffy Davis, the young um, oh, Welshman, but team Great Britain member. So he's there behind Joel Hetrick. Then it's Wienan in third, Chad Wienan number 47. Brilliant, brilliant riding. He's going round the outside of Davis and does it smartly. Davis threw it a little bit too hard, the number 15 rider. The green flag's going for Ireland as well because uh, we've got some strong, strong riders out there. Dean Dillon is out again and he's supported by David Cowan from Ireland. But still, Dufford Davis in the red shirt. Going well. Behind him, Chris Tavaren. There, the yellow-shirted Norwegian. And then it's Dean Dillon, the Irishman, behind him. Christopher Aaron for Norway, very strong, having a good look going through on the inside of Davis and making it stick. That's a very popular passing place, that right-hander, as the elevation drops away. If you skate round on the inside there, you stand half a chance. And nine times out of 10, you can pull it off. Christopher Aaron then. On his way now, but he's got a couple in front of him. As the captions roll through the bottom of your screen, you can see the riders in the lower order, but this one, Dean Dillon, number two, in the green shirt for Ireland. Good, strong Team Ireland effort in race one, and an equally good one, as Dillon and Duffin Davies scrap tooth and nail. 
but it's Joel Hedrick number 48 out in front with a clear clear lead this according to my American co-commentator Kevin P Bailey who was with me on the event as it unfolded yesterday tells me that he's the quickest man in the USA on a quad and you better believe it it looks like it here comes Chad Wiener 47 look how he uses his big frame rides a lot of the bumps and whoops on his legs not down in the seat at all so very tiring on the thigh muscles Christopher Aronen now pushing on up to third place and looking strong the Norwegian Kevin Sarr out of the first one I remind you Christopher Aronen's arch rival in the EMX European Championship here comes Dean Dillon, the number two. Very strong backup to his uh, team captain, of course, Mark McLernan, who we interviewed at the top of the program. On his way then, Dean Dillon. Oh, fellow team member, that's David Cowan. David Cowan and Ricardo Felix for the Netherlands, number 12. Cowan number three for Ireland, skating through or trying to skate through on the inside. But feel it, the number 12 Netherlands rider. Nice to see them in blue and orange. And it was, it will also be nice to see Etienne backs in the same strip when the sidecars come out. Oh no, what a shame. David Davis out of it, red flag, what's that all about? So race stoppage, and I have no idea what the stoppage was about but uh, clearly there's been an accident further down the track and the organizers decide that the race must come to an end it's gone more than two-thirds distance and the result will be declared yeah that's probably one of the best races i've ever done personally for myself and i know my teammate davy done very well there as as well um got a really good jump out of the gate um, I think I was fifth, made a quick pass into fourth and just found my groove straight away. I think that's the best my machine's been working all year. It's just, it's quite rough out there now and it's just absorbing all the bumps really well and it's making it easier for me. So, but yeah, unfortunately the race was stopped early there. Due to the Estonian guy crashing down the hill, hopefully he's okay. But I mean, yeah, in terms of our performance there, I think we're setting ourselves up pretty well here. Indeed you are, and our best wishes go to the Estonian lad who crashed and was receiving medical treatment. Uh, all part of the hazards of racing, I'm afraid. But race three coming up, and who is going to do the business this time? The Americans have proved to be very strong in this Kremlin track, and a young Bryce Ford taking a victory, so he'll be delighted with that. But who's going to get the whole show? Well, it is! It is the young American, obviously buoyed by his success earlier. Bryce Ford it is in the red shirt getting a flyer. Joel Hetrick right up on the berm there, getting it sideways way, way, way down the order. He was pushed wide, but it's Bryce Ford from Randy Naveau. It looks like Randy Naveau, the Belgian. It's certainly the Belgian shirt. Well, Randy Naveau getting a cracking start, but what about Bryce Ford? Joel Hetrick further down the order there. Yuri Kaspar, the number 28 check in the middle of your picture. There, Christopher Ernan. Christopher Ernan, 21. He's got Kevin Saar climbing all over the back of him. Number 40 on the blue on the inside line. Cool. Number 10 in there as well. The Netherlands riders are being very, very strong indeed. Brilliant ride. Brilliant ride by these guys. Joe Masson strong in there, but uh, nothing like Bryce Ford. And Chris Tverland looking really, really good as well. Tverland in the top four. Randy Naveau right with him. Kevin Saar up there. And there, here comes Joel Hetrick. Joel Hetrick, number 48, fighting his way through in the Stars and Stripes helmet, having just muscled his way past the Belgian. a class act there's no doubt about it this Belgian 13 Harry Walker Harry Walker fighting as well in this one fast very very fast these quads are 
quicker than the sidecars, but they're only carrying one man, let's face it. And uh, their corner speed, of course, is much, much quicker. I wouldn't really like to jump one through the air the way these guys do, but there's Patrick Torini in the blue. Patrick Torini now locked in battle with Harry Walker, the number 13 red-shirted rider. Christopher Verlin is right with them as well. So those three, this is a real scrap going on now, but ahead of them is a Kevin Saar. Kevin Saar is pushing hard. Harry Walker on the outside. Patrick Torini, number six, the blue-shirted Italian. Side by side, looking every which way. Torini through. Has he got the power? Can he get the drive? Walker, though, very strong, very competent. Doing a good job for Great Britain here. Going on the left-hand side, this side, Torini. This time around, can he get it? Look at Tavernan. Tavernan lurking there. These two really, really locked in battle. Joel Hetrick, 48. Making his way past and right now charging, charging very, very hard indeed. Having had a terrible start, was about 12th into the first turn. And who's getting in this time? Over we go then. It's going to be Joel Hetrick to take this one. Joel Hetrick at the front. What a ride for him. He's thrilled. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Bryce Ford claiming second place. Not a bad job for USA. Randy Navo over in third. Waiting for Kevin Saar, the blue shirt of Kevin Saar. Rest of these guys coming over. Kevin Saar will claim fourth place. There you have the top three. Hetrick, Ford, Navo. Saar it is in fourth. Confirmed. Well, what a race. And the team competition, United States win it. Ireland. France third, so Ireland runners-up, champions last year, not too shabby at all. Well done, boys. But the USA, dominant. Great Britain down there in eighth place, Walker, Morgan and Davis. Would have expected stronger from Norway, but Tavern wrote well. Further down the order, I uh, hope the Estonian rider is well. Wishes go to him. Well, that's it then, climbing to the podium. Third place it was for Team France. Good result for Team France. They'll be delighted. They rode hard. Sorry, a uh, little bit uh, English. Uh, very good uh, race. Uh, I, uh, vive la France. <laughs> vive la France. How wonderful. Runners up then, Team Ireland. McLernan, Dylan and Cowan. Just as the raid came down. Yeah, big honour for us to be up here again. I think that's five times in a row now for Ireland being on the podium. So, yeah, let's hear it. Uh, can't really ask for much more than that. So, yeah, thanks. And USA clad in their national flag. Just desserts. Look at the smile on the face of Bryce Ford. Chad Weenan, thrilled to bits. Unbelievable. Uh, just the, the way the day started for me was uh, a roller coaster. But, man, these guys rode amazing. And, you know, Bryce showed his, uh, his maturity this weekend. And that was huge for us. And he brought his A game. And uh, Joel, he's one of the best. And uh, this guy put it all out there this weekend. And our, our whole team was behind us, our fans, everybody. And just the welcoming here in, in Europe is uh, overwhelming to us. And, and we, we really enjoy it. And we feel very welcomed here. And just a huge day for us. It's uh, been uh, two, two years since we've been able to be over here. And it was, uh, we really miss you guys. And we're, we're glad to be back. Class act, aren't they, the Americans? Well, there it is, American, Ireland, and France. Podium, brilliant. Sidecar's coming up, of course, and uh, we're looking forward to that. This, the 20th year, in actual fact, of this competition, or thereabouts.
Welcome back to Kremlin. A very traditional start to the sidecar part of the program. The quads have done their thing and now the sidecar team's turn to meet the crowd. They're adoring supporters and newly crowned champion Etienne Bax was up for it. Etienne, your captain of the Netherlands team. This, of course, the Nations, the team event. So I could say maybe there's less pressure, you think, this weekend? Well, from one side there's less pressure because uh, a GP season is a full season. You know, you have week by week, uh, almost you have uh, that pressure. This is only one weekend. It, it, it falls to the good direction or to the bad. So, uh, but of course, you know, there's team effort. Uh, we have a great team, I think, this year with uh, with Hermans and uh, and Verwerven. So. I'm looking forward and uh, the pressure is still there because you want to not only do good for yourself but also for the team Netherlands and uh, uh, from one side it gives pressure, from the other side I feel quite confident that we have a strong team this year and uh, yeah, that we can win uh, this event. Well, runners up last year in Switzerland, you wouldn't argue with them but Marco Heinz, uh, always a man who gets stuck in, doesn't always go his way. Second place last year, you are back here at Kremlin a track you like, yes? Yes, uh, uh, Kramol is a very good track. Uh, it's many years in, in the GPs and uh, I like this. Who do you see as the main competition? Obviously, Bax and the Netherlands are strong, but can you finish second again? I th think not. Uh, I hope when we uh, posi position five is okay for us, but... Uh, 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 Holland and Bel Belgium and uh, England is too too much for us. Well, he's a realist. What a lovely man. But Kurt Varick, runner-up in the world, what a star he is. He'll never pass any English exams, but by golly, he's got a sense of humour. Kurt Varick, captain of Team Team Estonia. It's a strong team? Of course strong. I'm not captain. I'm driver. <laughs> captain is here. Hugo, mechanic, it's captain. The guys on the board. Behind you, all good guys? Of course. Very good guys. Can you win? Can you beat Netherlands this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything is possible at this, I don't know. How is possible? <laughs> how wonderful, wonderful. That's how they line up then. Bax, Gert van Verven, Dan Foden, Nathan Cooper going well. Third of the British team, really, really good. Racer Gordiev Van Lukener, Van Dala for Belgium. Liel Bardis with uh, Kostas Beletskis on board for Latvia. The French are here, Pruny and Chanteloup. Marco Heinz, uh, Sven Boab, we don't see much of them. Can they run the pace? Gary Moulds, John Wilson there, looking good as well. Lucas Cherney, well, you know, this is going to be a big, big grid. Oh, can't wait. Here we go then, shaping up for race one. What will happen? We can only wait and see. The Kremlin track in prime condition. The gate ready to go. Down it drops in and away they go. Good start by Stuart Brown and Josh Chamberlain on the left hand side of your picture. They are streaming in, but look at that, the red and white of Lucas Journey. Lucas Journey on the Yama gets the whole shot and the massive tangle. One or two tied up there. That's one of the Italian crews. Oh, Jason Van Dahl in number 17 getting in sideways, clashing, locking horns with Stuart Brown and Josh Chamberlain. Oh, the number 43 crew that looked like Daniel Leal Bardis. Yes, it is. He's in there. The 16-year-old Latvian is right in the mix. Gert van Verven a bit further down the field. But what a start by Czerny. What a start by Czerny. Marvin van Lukener, he didn't get the best of starts. He and Robbie Bax, number 16, in the pale blue shirts as Jason van Dala does a pirouette, rides around in circles and rejoins further down the order. Etienne Bax there, Etienne Bax and Andre Chermak did not get a good start either. They had to stay out of trouble. There's Big Gert van Verven, number two for the Netherlands. Here's your race leader, Lucas Cherny. Lucas Cherny and Bastien Chopin, his French passenger. My goodness me, this bloke can get out of the gate. And the Java, or Java as we call it here in the UK, the Java four-stroke is amazingly quick. Been building speedway engines for many, many years, of course. Stuart Brown, Stuart Brown and Josh Chamberlain running really, really well. Great start for them, a 
Good, good ride for them a week ago in the final round of the World Championship at Rudersburg as well. So Stuart Brown, 50 years of age, but what good form he's got. That looked like Van Lukener. Van Lukener coming, here he comes to number 16. Marvin Van Lukener slotting into second place behind Cherny and Chopin. Stuart Brown, Josh Chamberlain third. Then it's Marco Heinzer and Rudy Betchart, the number four Swiss, the gritty little Swiss. Jason Van Dahl and Edward Sunans. Second bit of drama in this race already. He's nothing if not spectacular, Van Dahl. The only man, of course, to have successfully pulled off a sidecar backflip. Look at Van Lugan looking over the shoulder. There's a deep rut digging out on that left hand. I'm tempted to call it a right-hander because the chair's on the outside, but it's a left-hander and it will suit Stuart Brown and Josh Chamberlain as they drive around in third place, they go. Heidser. And who is that? Looks like Lil Bardis could be there in fifth place. Bax Chermak, it's Bax Chermak out of fifth. There they are then. Bax Chermak from that bad start now making ground. Lucas Cherny, number 19. Off comes a ripoff. Still fighting hard behind Stuart Brown. 18 British championships for Stuart Brown. Here comes Bax. Marco Heinzer goes through. Marco Heinzer then through on Cherny. Cherny fighting back, not taking it, lying down. Cherny's problem, if you can call it a problem, that he's not race fit over long races. But he's certainly got the speed and he can't devote the time to doing all the world championships because of family commitments and business commitments and stuff he has to do back at home. But when he arrives, it's in style in a great big double-decker bus. A modern double-decker bus, that is, not a, not a London transport double-decker bus. Number one, Bax and Chermak on the back of Marco Heinzer. Marco Heinzer, a very tough cookie. He doesn't surrender easily and won't be surrendering easily even to the newly crowned world championship. There, number two, Gert van Verven, Ben van den Bogart on the TM four-stroke. 15 four-stroke outfits in this field. Five or six of the Austrian-built mega two-strokes. And all the rest are the tried and tested Zon. Team Ireland there. And is that in the shape of Gary Moulds? I didn't quite get the number. Gary Moulds here, along with his fellow countrymen, of course, and what a big turnout there is for Ireland. Jonathan Wilson and Campbell. But it will be Gary Moulds and Lewis Gray in this opening one, and Churn is out of it. Journey out of it, the other on the side, something wrong with the back end. Either the chains come off or the wheels coming loose, shaking a few spokes loose. And that does tend to be the trouble with a moose. A moose is a hard piece of rubber that replaces the inner tube as Etienne Bax jauntily jumps past Marco Heinzer and Rudy Betchart, who are always good value for money. They really, really are. So on his way now, Etienne Bax. Up to third place, Marvin Van Lukena, Robbie Bax out in front, the pale blue shirts of Belgium. Very difficult to identify people, different colours, different numbers, different strip. Checkered flag is out, Van Lukena Bax take victory. A win for them. Stuart Brown, Josh Chamberlain, good second, they weren't that far away, were they? Bax and Chermak third. About seven seconds between those top three. Marco Heinz and Rudy Betchart. Fourth place for them. A hard fought fourth place. Four on the bike, four in the race. Not all bad. Rest of the guys coming round, but 25 minutes and two laps. Still tough on this Kremlin track. It's digging out quite badly. Gert van Verven, Ben van der Bogart over there in fifth place. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we decide with the uh, with the Belgium team that we go from the second row. So uh, yeah, for sure it's not so easy. But uh, we can, we uh, make a uh, quite good start, and uh, yeah, we came uh, fast uh, as possible to to the lead, and we can win the race. So I think it was a hard race, but a perfect one. It certainly was a perfect one. Well done, Marvin. So one win under your belt, and good points for Team Belgium. Brilliant. Great performance. Race two coming up.
Right then, here we go. Kremlin track in good order here, and the gate drops, and who gets away this time? Well, let's have a look. Looking for someone up the whole shot, and it looked to so. It was Kuhn Hermans, yes it was. Oh, that's, it. that's the Italians. That's the Italians upside down, and the other crew I can't see. Lasagna Brothers there, 15. Kuhn Hermans and Robbie Devena out this weekend with Jason Van Dahlen, number 17, still in the hunt. He does not give up. He's like a terrier, this boy. Jason Van Dahle and Edward Sunans riding really, really well this weekend. I wish they'd make a regular appearance in the World Championship because then we'd all be highly, highly entertained. But Kuhn Hermans it is. And his uh, teammate further down the order, Gert Van Verven out again. There is Gert Van Verven fighting their way through. And of course we've got Brett Wilkinson in this one and Joe Millard. Brett Wilkinson and Stuart Brown, Josh Chamberlain go out again. There they are in the middle of that. That's the number 45 crew. That is Gorbenko. Did this Gorbenko and Rodolphe Le Breton, his young French passenger, riding for Latvia this weekend. Rodolphe Le Breton seems to be able to jump in with anybody. He was out with Julian Veldman in Germany just last weekend. He's ridden with Daniel Willemsen. He's ridden with the best. So this young French passenger definitely has a bright future. There will be a shortage of passengers in the season ahead because Ben van der Bogart, number two, is retiring. Robbie Bax is retiring. Who else is retiring? Josh Chamberlain is retiring from Stuart Brown Sycar. Brett Wilkinson coming over the back there and watching the rest of these guys go through. There you have Kasper Stupinus. He's another one who's retiring. On the back of Gert Gordiev, the number 29. Brett Wilkinson did not get the good start, so he is going to have to work his socks off. Kuhn Hermans and Robbie Devena, resplendent. Robbie Devena, another passenger who's not used to riding at the top level, but has jumped in and made a really, really good job of it. So when there are vacant chairs, Devena's name has to be on the list, definitely, as a passenger, because there aren't that many spare who can do the job at this level. And we all know what that means. Number 30, Kurt Varick and Larry Kunas. They are up to second place now, but unable to close Kuhn Hermans down. You heard Kurt Varick in his interview say it was going to be tough. Stuart Brown and Josh Chamberlain really logged again in third place and going good, going really, really well ahead of Gert Van Verven. And Van Verven's got his hands full with Jason Van Dahle. So it's not easy peasy for Big Gert, but he's got the edge on. He's on the right line now to tuck it in on the inside, but Van Dahle will go sweeping round the outside, trying to cut back in. There he goes, the number 17, pale blue shirted Belgian. He's good value. Jason Van Dahle really, really is. With Edward Sooners, that's another passenger who probably will find a better seat next year. And here comes Brett Wilkinson. Brett Wilkinson and Joe Millard now making their way up. They're about past Van Dahle and Gert Van Verven is ahead of them. Van Verven going out a shot now, but uh, still all going on. Who else is coming? This is Gordiev. This is Gordiev coming now on Van Dahle. Gert Gordiev, Kasper Stupilis, the number 29 crew. Their fellow countrymen Kurt Varick is already up into second place, but there they are. Gordiev and Stupilis, number 29. And there, Brett Wilkinson and Joe Millard. They've got their hands full with them now. And that is not what Brett Wilkinson wanted. Nonetheless, it's game on between these two. Brett will come strong in the race. He had an appalling start, just did not get it off the line. Hermans way out in the lead with these guys fighting there's Varick in second second place for Kurt Varick and Larry Kunas a good comfortable second place as well uh, this 
reputed to be Kurt Varick's final season as they follow the Lithuanian team around there. And there's one lady passenger at this event riding for Lithuania. Victoria, I take my hat off to you because we all know how tough this is. And for the fair sex to be doing it and hanging in there for 25 plus two laps, fair play girl. Showboating from Kuhn Herman to Robbie Devaner. Look at the way he extends his body, throws his head back to maximize the ballast on the sidecar. And that's a good, good win by Kuhn Hermans. Victory for them. Job done. Checkered flag out. Hermans to Vena then. Home and dry in race two here. Varakun Kunas over the hill. Second place confirmed for them, albeit a few seconds adrift. And waiting now for the third place finishers. Stuart Brown and Josh Chamberlain, here they come. Job well done, said Stuart. But here's Kunas. We were fourth at the start and um, then we could make the passes and get the second place. Tried to catch Hermans, but uh, uh, on this race he was a little bit faster than us and just controlling the gap. So on the last race we will, we will catch him. Well, brilliant. Larry Kunas there, perspiring heavily. Well, you would, wouldn't you? 25 minutes and two laps around there. Race three coming up, of course. The track is in good condition, but it is digging out down the back. Let's see what the boys can do in race three. Down goes the gate then. We've got the creme de la creme in this one. Let's see what can happen. Can Kuhn Hermans do it again? That was a pretty impressive start from someone. And who was it got it? It looked as though Varick. Was that Varick or was that Van Lukener? It looked as though Varick might have made up the whole shot here. Let's have a look. I think it is. It's Kurt Varick, Kurt Varick, Larry Kunas. Number 30. Away they go then. They've got the lead. Who's coming behind them? Marco Heinzer. Then it looked like Bax. It looked like Bax in third. Varick then, second in the World Championship. Marco Heinzer, Rudy Benchart behind him. Etienne Bax, Andre Chermak, the top three. Marvin Van Lukener on the left-hand side, going down into the bottom bend, slotting into what looked like fourth place. Etienne Bax high over that jump. Arch rival Marvin Van Lukener with him. Let's see what the left-handed chair of the Swiss, Marco Heinzer, can do this time. How big is the advantage of a right-handed chair? Well, it's going to be shown this time. We'll soon find out. Great stuff. These four are well away with it now. The rest of the field getting dropped away already. Etienne Bax pushing hard. Marvin Van Luken are now on the back of the newly crowned world champion. Kurt Varick under enormous pressure. A look over the shoulder. Well, I wonder how long I can hang on to this. He's thinking in Estonian. Well, they're doing well. Bax, though, is there. Bax is there. Up the inside, Etienne Bax, Andre Chermak steal the lead. So they go ahead. Bax and Chermak up in front. Van Lukina coming with them. He's going to give it everything he's got, Van Lukener. No, there's no doubt about it. Varick still in second at the moment, but not for long because Van Lukener's up the inside and through. That is a fast line down over those deep, deep drops. Very fast, flat out. You've got to be really fired up to do that, and he is. Varick and Kunas in third now. Number 43, that is, are Daniel Leolbardis and Kostas Beletskas. The 16-year-old identical twin whose brother rides with him, except that at the opening round in Kaplica, in the opening race, they crashed and an arm was broken, so the passenger's out. But Kostas Beletskas stepped in to help. Kuhn Hermans, Robbie Devena, now past Marco Heinzer. So a race win already for them last time out, but uh, this time didn't get the start they wanted. They're having to work for it. Neil Bardis, 43. My goodness me, this kid's got a bright future. He and his brother, identical twins. Latvian champions, newly crowned just a few weeks ago. 
Runners up in Strasbourg back to Marvin van Lukener with eight GP crews behind them. Yes, eight GP crews behind them. Sensational talent. Are they going to take the world crown back to Latvia one of these days? Look at Van Lukener. Van Lukener on the inside of Bax and goes through and takes first place. Etienne Bax and Andre Chermak relegated here. Van Lukener and Robbie Bax in his very last ride at world level. International cycle motocross will be a thing of the past after today for Robbie Bax. And that is a great shame for all of us because he is a world-class, of course he's world-class. And he's a great character, perfect English, good to interview and highly entertaining. Look at the crowd applauding this. Bax back in front now. Back in front, Bax. Bax and Chermak. This is a battle now between two former champions, 2018 champions, Marvin van Lukener. Andre Chermak knows this is on his way now on his way to victory here on home soil for the newly crowned world champions. Applause all round, but it's final lap and the flag is not far now for Etienne Bax, and there it is. Etienne Bax and Andre Jermak take victory here ahead of Marvin van Lukener. Here they come, Marvin van Lukener, Robbie Bax, and not too far behind Kurt Varick and Larry Kunas number 30 great great applause from the crowd the air horns go and that is how the team competition finish up great britain runners up fantastic netherlands again winners estonia good result for them belgium latvia incredible for the lille bardis boy france switzerland marco wanted fifth he got seventh czech republic germany austria rounding out the top 10. What a team competition we've had here in Kremlin. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Ireland, well, they fought hard, the boys. Never mind. Look at Kurt Varick. This, the presentation then for the overall. Kaspar Stupilis, he's another one who's retiring. I compete in 16 destinations and 15 times on the podium. It's great. <laughs> How many times out of this podium? 15. 15! Wow, that's perfect balance, right? Exactly. Well, runner-up spot for Team Great Britain. Magnificent job, boys. Well done. Off-season now, so let the party begin. Oh, definitely. So you are super happy with performing all of your team? Yeah, we've done a great job this weekend, so super happy. And top of the box again for Team Netherlands. Etienne Bax, the captain. Gert van Verven grinning as usual. And you always make jokes and have fun on the track. Is it correct? Yes, it must be, or else it's no sidecar cross. Definitely, you have the spirit of the sidecar cross. What an amazing team competition we've had here in Kremlin in the Czech Republic. What an amazing welcome the Czech Republic spectators gave us all. What an amazing job the marshals did, all the medics. Let's not forget, without the support staff, we cannot go racing. Hope you enjoyed it. This almost brings to an end our season for 2022. We'll all be back in 2023. From me, Barry Nutley, thanks for watching us on WSC Livestream and this highlight show. We will be looking back over the 2022 season, but then it will be a wrap until 2023. Look after yourselves.